This is African American History's American History. Welcome. I'm your host, Harlan Kearsley. This program's goal is to foster understanding, promote discussion, and expand knowledge through stories of historical events, bios of unsung heroes, as well as timely and relevant news stories which hopefully will paint a vivid picture of the effects of segregation, discrimination, and bigotry on the lives of both blacks and whites. Paul Revere Williams was born in Los Angeles, California on February 18, 1894. He was a highly accomplished architect who embarked on designing homes and commercial buildings in the early 1920s. Over the course of his career, he designed approximately 2,500 buildings. Practicing mostly in Southern California, Williams designed the homes of numerous Hollywood celebrities, including Frank Sinatra, Lucille Ball and Desi Arnaz, Lon Chaney, and Barbara Stanwyck. Although a significant number of his designs were located in the Los Angeles area, many others were situated across the globe. Now, what's remarkable about Paul Williams is that he accomplished all of this as a pioneer. Being African-American in an industry that was predominantly white. This is African American History is American History. Paul Revere Williams studied architectural engineering from 1916 to 1919 at the University of Southern California where he earned his degree. At age 25, he won an architectural competition and three years later opened his own office. In 1923, Williams made history by becoming the first black architect to join the prestigious American Institute of Architects. In 1957, he was further recognized by the AIA when he became the first black member to be inducted into its College of Fellows. During World War II, Williams worked for the Navy Department as an architect. On February 27, 1949, the anthology radio series, Destination Freedom, by Richard Durham, presented an episode on Williams entitled, The Houses That Paul Built. Destination Freedom. <laughs> Destination Freedom, dramatizations of the great democratic heritage of the Negro people, is brought to you by station WMAQ as a part of the pageant of history and of America's own Destination Freedom. Ace architect Paul R. Williams pioneered in a field formerly regarded as forbidden to Negro Americans and became one of the nation's leading builders and designers. In a chapter entitled... The houses that Paul built, we tell the architect's story. In the city of Los Angeles, there once lived a boy who dreamed of building blocks around space and becoming a sculptor with stone and steel. In his child's world, he dug tunnels all the way under the Pacific Ocean, and he built skyscraper hotels higher than Mount Whitney. And when his anxious mother missed him, she generally had a pretty good idea where to look. Oh, Paul? Is everything all right, Paul? The least you can do, Frank, is help me look for that son of yours. Oh, he's around, Amy. Don't be upset in yourself. Every time he come out by the river, he digs in the sand. I wish he wouldn't always be digging and hiding himself. Your ditch digging in the sand is enough. There's something deeper in ditch digging that Paul's after. I've taught him everything there is about sand around the river here. Down to 50 feet of it. He's safe. Oh, Paul! He's over there, Amy. See oh. his trademark? See those sand buildings? Come on. I'll bet you he's behind it. He's my son, all right. Paul! Yeah, Ma. Oh, hi, dear. Get up out of that tunnel before it caves in on you. Get out! Oh, sure, Ma. Sure. <laughs> What's this you're building, Paul? A subway. Like the one they got in London. This here's a station. I haven't finished it yet. 
tracks here for the trains that come in. Chicka, 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 wow, wow. And, and this is the garage for the trucks that come in. And this here, a hotel. <laughs> what I tell you, Amy? A natural born builder. A natural born nuisance. Boy, I sure like to live in a hotel like this. What are you, Dad? Instead now, of... don't go wrecking your home. Sure, you build nice hotels in the sand. So exclusive looking out, but if they came to life, you couldn't live with them. Oh, you want to bet? You wait and see. You just I'll wait. I'll be waiting. I'll leave your buildings and get ready for home. Go on. Okay, Dad. Okay. I wish you wouldn't always keep promising him things you know you can't give him. You mean about being an engineer and architect? Who's going to pay for the schooling? I can dig enough ditches to get them started. I'm the best sand hog in the state, ain't you? Just so your son can be trained as an architect. He'll never make it. That's the same way some folks around here talked about only the bunches boy, Ralph. He wants to be a political scientist. He's doing all right. Won a scholarship to Harvard. Mrs. Bunches boy was lucky. Is there enough luck for two Los Angeles boys? Ain't there? You watch what I tell you. Paul's not afraid to take a chance. His old man can dig under the ground to be a sand hog. Well, he ought to be able to do a little digging to be an architect, and he'll wish to. Now, where'd he bury himself this time? Paul! Oh, Paul! 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 Of course, as he grew older, he had a girl. A girl who believed in him, even if her father didn't. I'll never give my consent for my daughter to marry a fool who thinks he's going to be an architect in Los Angeles. Never. Father, listen to me. I've listened, Della. You mean you won't give your consent, Mr. Gibbons? I said I'll disown the girl if she takes up with you. I mean it. But why? He's not honest, Della. Father. If he were honest, he'd do honest work. Instead, he turns down work. Well, it's only until I finish school, sir. Then what do you do? Your father was a sand dog. He died a sand dog. Go to work. Nobody hires colored architects. Sure, there's a lot of building going up out west. Sure, you got a knack for drawing pictures. And them tricks of yours of drawing upside down and making straight lines without a ruler. It's all right for courting. But it ain't right for supporting a wife. And that you'll never do until you learn to go down and dig like your father. He wasn't scared of getting dirty or getting killed even. Until you can dig like your father, you'll never make it. Never. But somehow, with Della's love and confidence in him, with work, sweat, ingenuity, he got through school, and on graduation day, proudly took his place in line as the president of the school passed out diplomas and jobs. Next, Chesterton? Yes, sir. Congratulations. Your certificate. We've secured a job for you with the Averman Drafting Company. Good luck, architect. Uh, thank you, sir. Next, McKinsey. Yes, sir. You'll start work with Higland Construction. Your certificate. Good luck. Thank you, sir. William? Uh, Paul Williams? Yes, sir. Uh, here's your architect's certificate. Congratulations. Yes, sir. About the, the job. Well, we haven't been able to find work for you. Oh, but... Oh, I know. You're the one who won so many school prizes. And don't think the architectural firms don't know about it, but, uh, well, we warned you before you insisted on taking the course. The companies out here won't use Negro architects, not even good ones. Well, did you try the engineering firms, sir? We tried those, too. Told them you had mastered both courses, but, uh, but it's the same story. But there's a lot of buildings going up. Uh... And if there was ever a time the country needed architects with skill and imagination, it's now. But you've taken the wrong course. It was a good course. You put a lot into it, I know. Oh, I've got a lot out. I think i got enough to know that I can be an architect. I'd stake my life on it. I wouldn't. The job is to find some firm to start with. How you'll go about finding one, I don't know. I don't know at all. The architect didn't know either. And in the night he came home and was more than usually quiet until his wife asked. Paul? Huh? Did you get it? Oh, 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 you mean the certificate? I mean the job. Where are you starting? Well, it didn't exactly say. 
What did they say? Oh, oh Adele, I guess it's like your father said. It's foolish. The school says there's not a firm in town that'll take me. Prize winner or no prize winner. I'm through. You're just starting. You didn't hear me. I heard you when I first married you, Paul. I didn't expect it to be easy. I expected it would take some looking. Look, where, where'll I get references? Where? Here's all the references you need. That's a phone book. For what? We're looking under the A. We're going to list every architect's firm in Los Angeles. Then you're going to visit them one by one. There's got to be one that'll test your work. We'll find that one. Now write that down. She leafed through the pages of the phone book, and he wrote down the names of the multitude of firms. Anders and Anders, South and Central Streets, Deed, McFarland, Washington at the Square, Mason Hill, Devlin Brothers, Ogden at Stoney, Keith and Brantman, Engelstein, Shaw. <laughs> And he went looking for the one who would open the door. Yep, Mrs. Devon Brothers, all right. We can't take you. Our clientele wouldn't like it, you know. You'd never do. You'd never do. Anders and Anders. Yes. You're an architect. Certified. Well, now, of course, my company doesn't discriminate against race, creed, or color, but uh, I'm sorry we can't use you. With Deed and McFarland? Well... Right now, what's to give you the idea, young man, that this city needed any more architects? Well, those dead old buildings that cover half the city gave me the idea. Oh? I believe I could build better ones. No, Mason Hills can't hire you, Williams. Uh, I, I like your drawings, though. That's uh, what they all say. Mm, I understand. Uh, how long have you been looking around? Oh, I guess nearly a year now. I have an idea. Now, I I'm not sure it works. Yes, sir. It's only an idea, mind you. Oh, go on. You know quite a bit about engineering and about building around sand pits. My father died in the sand. Hmm, yes. There's a firm out over by the river, the Spivak Contractors. They're building a dam, and I understand they're having plenty of trouble with their caissons. I see. They might need a sand hawk. Uh, now, wait till I finish. They hired quite a few architects and engineers. And maybe if you can show the old man you're necessary, he'll take you on. Where will I find you, sir? In his office near the dam. Now, I'll, I'll give his secretary ring and tell her I'm sending you. It's a slim chance, but it's one worth taking. Well, he took the slim chance and went out to the riverbed and watched the caissons and studied the sand and silk and saw one case on in danger. Then he went to the contractor's office and waited while he talked yeah, over the phone. They're not talking. Sure, we're behind schedule on that panel. No, I can't push the man faster. I'm working according to the architect's plan. Exactly. But if another case on blows in, we won't have a clue to work with. We've got to have more time and credit. See the bank, anybody. Hello. Hello. Listen. Yes? What is it? There's a young architect waiting to see you. See me for what? He's coming in, sir. What's the idea of busting into my office? I haven't much time. What is it? Paul, I'm Williams. Paul Williams. I understand you need an architect or an engineer. I'm both. Is that what you come here for? Oh, yes, sir. And to warn you about those caissons out there in the river. One of them slightly tilted. It's on tricky ground, and you're liable to have a blow if air gets under that case, huh? Well, your advice is very touching. Is that all you come for now? You do need an architect. Try some other company. Well, you're the only one I haven't tried. I haven't got time to experiment. If you want work, well, you can start here as a sand hog. I'm sure. Oh. Lord, what was that? It was over by the river. My case, huh? Yeah, one's just had a blow, and one's still standing. What am I going to do? What can I do? Look, I, I know the sand around here. I'll tell you what we can do. You? You haven't much time. Listen, get out and take care of the injured from that first caisson. In order to save that tunnel and all the work you've put in on it, you've got to keep the men going on the good caisson until they dig the solid rock and get it anchored. How can I keep anyone working now? They're afraid. I'm not afraid. What do you know about it? 
I know a lot about the sand and silt in this region. I think I can show the men that it's safe. You armchair architects only think. When it comes time to do dangerous work like the sand, oh, let me go down. Try me. I wouldn't send my worst enemy down there. Still, if someone doesn't try it, I'm ruined. Will you try me? I'm going out and talk to the men. If I can't get them to work any other way, I'll make you the guinea pig. Come out here. He went out of the contractor's shed, and down the track to the river, and stood around while the contractor pleaded. Oh, look, man, look, please, look. You've got to go down and finish that tunnel. We can't stop now. If we go down in that hole, we'll all be finished. Forget our heads blown off. What about our lives? What about that, eh? I'm concerned about that. Two caissons flew in on us. We know tunneling 50 feet under a rough river is dangerous. It's part of the job. It's not a part of it. But if we stop now, the whole tunnel might blow in. All right, Tony, you're foreman. Send the men back down, you hear me? I hear you, Mr. Spivak. And I hear the men, too. Then get them to work on that tunnel. Get someone to show them a tunnel safe. I'll do it. Yeah. 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 This here all looks like the other. Same mud and lime and quicksand. Dig another pick in it in that case and go a boom like a rest. And then the architect who believed he knew the ground around him knew his turn had come, and he spoke. Wait a minute, man, wait a minute. This case on's not like the others. It's on safe ground. Who's saying it's safe? Who's it? What do you know about it? Well, he thinks he knows a lot about it, man. His name's Paul Williams. Listen to him if you won't listen to me. He's an architect and an engineer, and he uh, says... But the... what does he know about all these tunnels? I know how deep the sand goes down, and I can tell you the case on safe. Just uh, by looking, he can tell. I can show you. I crazy. Uh, I believe I can dig around the bottom for as long as you can look at me, and nothing will cave in. I crazy. Well, maybe I am. But if it's ready to cave in as you think, you'll be spared. I'll do the digging first. You hear that, man? Hearing is the one thing. Seeing is another. All right. Stand around the case on and watch. Hand me a pick. Here's a pick. Good. Now, now open the elevator shaft. Start up the pressure pumps and fill that case on with air. There, now. I'm ready. Oh, Williams, I'm thinking it's best if no one went down that case, son. Men are right. There's been enough there. Let the tunnel go. Yeah, that's what we're doing. Yeah, yeah, and I've been saying I think this part of the sand is safe. I believe it. I'll test it. Look, kid, if it blows in, I don't know you. I don't know your folks. If it blows, don't... all that won't matter. If it doesn't, it'll mean an armchair architect can know quite a bit that's useful. Then we'll talk about that job. Never mind that job. I've changed my mind. I haven't changed mine. Is the pressure ready? Yes, she's a pumper good. All right. Swing the elevator over. Now, now lower me down. The elevator swung around. The architect stepped in. The pulleys reversed. He slid slowly down the side of the deep hole. He poked at the walls with his pick, while above him the crew circled the caisson, and the contractor anxiously called down, Is everything all right? All right so far. No seepage here. Caisson's tight. Ten feet down. Everything all right? All right. Caisson's tight here. Twenty feet down. Everything all right? All right. Twenty-five feet down. And 25 feet down in the caisson, everything was right. Then 30 feet, and 35 down. 
In the lonesome tube, the architect looked up at the wide hole in the sky and down at the sand below and knew he was underground he had played on no more than a decade back when he romped on the sand and another contractor was calling and keeping watch over him. Everything all right down there, will you? All right. Can you see me? There we see you. Go ahead. Let the men look this way. I'll dig. Go ahead. The architect looked at the sands his father had died in and lifted his pick and struck into the rock and sand, hoping he was right and that the caisson would hold. He struck again and again. He dug while the men above looked down the case on walls and saw it holding and began to say, He's sleeping right into the side of the tunnel. And guess what? Hey, he's striking rough. Yeah. It'll hold for him and hold for us, too. Yeah. Mr. Spieler, maybe I'll tell the men to go around the world now. Who is the new man? I don't know yet. Keep the pressure up and then bring him up slowly. I'm going to find out what else he can do. And when the crew went back to work on the caisson, the architect went in to talk to the contractor. You've got nerve, Williams. Plenty of it. You've proven it. Oh, that's not all I can prove, sir. Now, these drawings... I've been trying to tell you already. I have the best architects in the city. Oh, I see. I'm sorry. I, I don't expect to use you as an architect. You're green just out of school. You take ten times longer to do what one of my draftsmen could do in a month. Well, then I guess I'll go on. No, no, no. Stick around and pick up some experience. You've got to get it somewhere. Start here. You mean I'm hired? We need a general utility man. What does a utility man handle? Generally, he starts with the broom. Can you start then? The architect started with the broom. He picked up what the draftsman dropped. He scanned blueprints on the drawing board. And in his mind, drew out each assignment the architects were given. Until one morning, the contractor Spivak called his staff together. All right, all right, man. Now listen, we've got a chance at a new contract that's pretty important to the company. I want the best architects to start work today. How much time we got? Yeah. Well, that's the trouble. If we finish drawing up the plans before other companies, we get the contract. It's for the new Seashore Hotel. Uh, I want architects Dezor, McElnick, Augustus, and Vance. Okay. All right, very well. It's to be modern in every detail. A three-wing hotel design is preferred, 60 rooms in each way. Now, listen carefully, and I'll give you the specifications. It's not to cost more than a million. Use materials that can be found in the state. And bring in your plans before the money... The utility man leaned on his broom and listened to the specifications. He consulted his knowledge of the laws of form and space and decided again to risk a step forward. You want to go home early, Williams. Oh, if you don't mind. I do mind. We'll need all the utility men we have now that our best architects will be away. Well, there's some homework I've got to do. Well, if your mind's set, go ahead. But architecture is a pretty demanding and exacting business, Williams. I'd hope you'd stick around, but... I intend to stick around. Yes, but mark my words. By going home early, you'll never become an architect. He marked the words of the contractor and went home with the specifications for the hotel in his head and told his wife, Della, I'm going to my room. Lock the door after me and let no one disturb me. Well, what is it, Paul? I'm going to see if the faith I've had in my ability is right or if your father was right. I'm going to try to draft plans for a hotel overnight. He went in with his boards and tools and measured out the floors, walls, stairs, wings, and scope of the hotel. And when he finished, he had blueprints and plans down to specification and had put 22 hours behind him. He staggered to work. The contractor was cool. I'm sorry you showed up, Williams. We had to hire another man in your place. I see. 
You don't seem disappointed. Oh, I won't be until you've looked over these plans I made for your hotel project. You did what? I drew up the plans last night. Impossible. The best architect would need at least a month. For a while, I thought so, too, but here are the preliminary plans. Will you look at them? All right, I'll... I'll take them in the office and have the directors look them over. Shall I wait? Uh, no, you you better come back tomorrow. Uh, it'll give us time to find out if you're a phony or if we've been blind. He gave them time to find out, and when he came back, the contractor was warm. We're uh, going to use your seashore designs. They're, they're the best we've seen. Thank you. We've told our other architects to stop working on the plan. We don't know how you did it, Williams, but we've decided that if you can dream up structures like that overnight, we ought to see that you're admitted into the Architects Association and set up in an office of your own. You mean that, sir? Provided you can repeat your past performance. Well... The Pacific Car Company is looking for a special design for their new factory. They've got architects working on it already. But if we could get our design in first, Say, in a day or two, we'd get the business. I understand. And the architect who did it would have no trouble getting known in the West. Did you try it? I'll try it. He tried it, and the next day he reported with blueprints for the factory. The contractor was warmer. And all overnight, you must have a dozen architects helping you. Yeah, I think this is what they'll take. And you did it so easily. Hey, uh, Williams, uh, are you feeling well? Oh, very well. Uh, 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 help somebody, he's fainted. He felt very well. And after he'd slept a week and recovered, the contractor had a word of advice for the new architect. You'll be on your own hereafter, Williams. It won't be pleasant, but if you can stick it out for a few years and stand the snobs and the prejudice, I think California will have one of the best architects in America. And he stuck it out in a small Los Angeles office and waited while clients came in to survey him. Some turned back. But one day, a client came who was to change the architect's direction. You've been in the industrial line, but I'd like to get you to do a private house for me. Well, sir, I'm willing. What kind? Well, something I can sit in up there in Beverly Hills, and nobody will pass it by without knowing who lives in it. Got to be wild, but a good house. You know what I mean. I don't know if I do know. I like to study the habits of the people I make houses for before I sketch, but with you, maybe I can guess. Here, I think you mean this. Now let me come over. Uh, no, uh, keep your seat. I'll sketch it upside down, uh, right side up for you. Now, you just tell me if I'm sketching right. Now, you're a man who likes mirrors, lots of mirrors and lights in unexpected places. You want a house that will be dramatized from door to basement, uh, like this. And you want it to reflect what you think is your own he used image. The trick of drawing upside down and watched his client become convinced that only one architect understood his need. I'll take it. You know, I'm sort of glad I dropped by here. I heard you were having a hard time getting clients. It has been hard. Maybe now the hard times are over. When they see this house you put up for me, they'll want something from you, too. I'll spread the word around. Have you got all the specifications you need now? Oh, well, I might need your name. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm in the acting business. I'm supposed to be the guy with a lot of faces. My name's Cheney. Lon Cheney. The new architect built the Cheney house. And as his client had predicted, it startled the colony. And others came with their specifications. Mr. Williams, I've got to have something that looks just as different from Mr. Cheney's place as you can make it. And uh, how many rooms did you have in mind? Oh, dear. I just don't know how many rooms I need. 
Suppose you just judge it by my personality, as your sign said, and make it nice and charming. The name's Pitt. Zazu Pitt. Sort of like that Pitt's house you put up, Mr. Williams. Sort of got me to thinking. Uh, maybe you could do something for me and my partner. Oh, I'm Charles Correll. On the radio, I'm Andy. The name's Power, Tron Power. Now, what I'm looking for is an architect that'll take time to give me all the sunlight I can get in Beverly. I'm Will Hayes. I'd like to speculate on a house. I'm Lucille Ball. Will you build me something near Las Vegas? <laughs> And the building began. And it didn't stop until his imagination and skill had scattered residences and industrial buildings, hotels and apartments all over the California hills. Uh, he's never built a tunnel all the way under the Pacific. He's never built a skyscraper higher than Mount Whitney. But he has justified his wife's faith and his boyhood dreams. Paul Williams met and licked every ugly problem life could throw at him, and stands today as one of the most successful architects of his or any other race. just heard Destination Freedom dramatization of the story of Paul Williams, famous California architect. Destination Freedom is written by Richard Durham. by Forrest Lewis. Paul as a boy was played by Oscar Brown, Jr. Della was played by Janice Kingslow, and Art Hearn played the part of Spivak. Others in the cast were Fred Finker, Maurice Copeland, and Arthur Peterson. The special music was composed by Emil Soderstrom and was played by Elwin Owen and Bobby Christian. This is Charles Chan inviting you to be with us again next week when Destination Freedom will tell the story of Canada Lee. This is NBC, the national broadcasting company. This is African American History is American History. Paul Revere Williams died in Los Angeles, California on January 23, 1980. He was 85 years old. This has been African American History is American History. The episode you've been listening to, The Paul Revere Williams Story, was written and directed by Harlan Kearsley. I'm Harlan Kearsley. Thank you for listening. And if you haven't done so, please like, comment, and subscribe to African American History is American History. And once you hit that bell icon, you'll be notified as soon as new episodes are posted. So thanks again, and please stay safe. African American history is American history. Copyright H.C. Kearsley, 2024.